Thank you, Chair. Colleagues, Minister, Commissioner. Um, the Alder Group recognizes that we must be pragmatic and flexible in our response to a crisis. And that means we need agreements with other countries, including Turkey. But we need solutions that are legally watertight and that do not fall apart in the blink of an eye. Now, the EU-Turkey agreement reminds me a bit of the famous painting of the Belgian artist Magritte. Ceci n'est pas un agreement. If you check the website of the European Commission, you will note that they have quietly replaced the term agreement by statement. And this happened sometime between April 19th and April 20th. So the legal status of this whole thing has now been downgraded to basically not much more than a joint press release. And in addition, key elements of the so-called agreement or statement or whatever it is, like visa liberalization, require the formal approval of the European Parliament and the Member States in a normal legislative procedure. Now, Vice President Timmermans has declared, and I agree, that Europe will not be held hostage by the Turkish government over visa liberalization. Next week, the European Commission will uh, present the progress report on the fulfillment of the requirements for the visa liberalization roadmap. And I'm interested to see if the Commission will indeed assess progress as strictly as the Vice President has stated. My group is in favor, in principle, of visa liberalization, but do not expect a rubber stamping exercise from our side. Because if the Turkish government intends to convince Parliament to vote for li visa liberalization, cracking down on journalists is not a very good strategy. And as a signatory to the European Convention on Human Rights, Turkey has to respect the freedom of expression. And the most recent violation, the arrest of Ebru Umar, an EU citizen and Dutch-Turkish journalist will not bring visa liberalization any closer. Now, as to the implementation of the agreement slash statement, Minister Dijkhoff seemed to be quite positive, and he says things are getting better, but that seems to clash with the reports we're getting, for example, from Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch about people not being allowed in to, Syria from, uh, from, uh, to Turkey from Syria or even being returned, uh, reports about people not having the right to apply for asylum, reports about detention conditions in Greece, people not even having enough food. So what are you doing to actually verify the situation? Do you only rely on uh, 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 answers by the authorities or do you actually do something about it? And what about indeed the waterbed effect? Because the Commission seems to say that there is no shift uh, from the flow of refugees towards Libya and Italy, but um, there are more people coming in through that route. Um, so how can we verify that the flow is not simply shifting? Um, now, this agreement is extremely fragile, both legally and in practice, and it is easy to criticize Turkey or the agreement. And I agree with Mr. Timmermans that this situation is the direct result of the inability or the lack of political will of European governments to agree on a fully-fledged EU asylum and migration policy. We outsource our problems, hope that Turkey and other countries will keep refugees away from our doorstep because we fail to agree on our own policies here in the EU. Europe is divided, paralyzed and weak and Erdogan knows it. So the only answer to this is European unity. But there doesn't seem to be a big sense of urgency. And I think it must therefore be the highest priority for the Dutch presidency to put a complete package on the table, including a border and coast guard, le legal labor migration and new Dublin rules. Because surely, if we can agree with the Erdogan government, we can find agreement between EU governments. Thank you.